Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over Gear Raid 1 Stage 19 using only Epic Heroes. Just so you know, this is the test server, it just allows me to use more stuff. So yeah, that's the premise of the video. I'll show you quickly the heroes I'm using and the gear. I have put some restrictions on the gear, I'm not using any Stage 19 gear, but it's not bad gear by any means. So. Here we have the first hero, which is Iona, one of the most important heroes for the run. I would say there are perhaps three to four really pivotal heroes. Iona is around 50% of the damage, around 45% of the damage more accurately. She is in a Fracture set, which is by far not the best set to use on her. It's just I don't have a lot of non-19 to 21 set, as you can see on the left side. Loads of this is Ancient Gear, which I tried not to use. So yeah, pretty good gear still. It's decent substats. Attack, crit damage all the way, got over 100% crit rate, more, way more than I need actually. But otherwise, pretty good sets, pretty good subs, so the best gear I've got is of course on these guys. So this video is mainly to show you comps that work, heroes that work, and how to use them. This is not saying, oh, you can beat it using a pencil and a toothpick. This is showing you that, you know, with attainable gear, this isn't the most insane gear. It's pretty good gear, absolutely, definitely it's pretty good gear, but the main folk, I mean, other than this piece... <laughs> but the main focus is the heroes and how effective the heroes can be and how to use them so it's just to help give you some ideas if you are stuck you don't need legendary heroes you do need good gear but this isn't like infernal raw or soulbound arcana or ageless wrath this is completely attainable gear i had better gear than this before i was beating 19 on my account as for the artifact these are the main two dps by the way this is maul he is more than half of the damage done and uh, as for artifacts, they are both using a level 25 ancestral teachings. For this challenge, I decided not to use a single myth artifact. So I have even an unupgraded Lantern of Radiance on my Hollow, who is the healer I'm using. I don't know if this is the best one. I haven't actually tested the artifacts for healers yet. But as for the actual gear for her, she's using an Aslepia set, which isn't ideal for her because it gives HP rather than attack. But it gives her healing effect, which I did need. I wanted to get over 100 healing effect, so that is good. I have one piece of attack bonus, another piece of attack bonus, and a healing effect piece. As you can see, pretty bad. I haven't actually kept a lot of healing gear on this account. And then I have a Calamity set on the left side. And uh, as you can see, it's not a great set. It has no healing effect on it. I just wanted to get some more attack speed, and I wanted to get more attack because I, I was having trouble healing. So yeah, that's the, that's the makeup of these three. So these are three of the more important ones. Then I'm using Mary. Mary's gear, it makes a set of insight, but that's generally just a coincidence. I put her in HP, attack speed, HP. I just wanted her not to die. You can see how bad the substats are on this gear. She doesn't do any damage. It's kind of irrelevant. As for the left side, it's life force, and I just wanted to get some HP, but it's, it's pretty poor gear again. But she does have 296 attack speed, so this is something I was really focusing on. And the artifact I have is Nightmare Samsara. This gives 5% rage for every 5 attacks, so that's the logic behind that. I wanted to get her ult up faster. So the only one hero that breaks my rule is Dolores, and it doesn't matter. I've given her the Warlord set, but the Warlord set is only different from the normal fatality set in that it gives 30 attack speed right she doesn't care for attack speed it doesn't really matter for her and i've heard it doesn't actually work on her if you test it in combat i'm not going to go into that in this video but that's what i've heard i have oh, I, the only reason she has this gear is i couldn't be bothered to change it because like i said it doesn't make any difference on dolores it's just attack speed so yeah she's in the warlord set for the 25 percent attack bonus on the right she has the glacier set which is more important she's not in the best glacier set but it's okay like it has the stats but it's not particularly good this piece is okay but you know you'd want a hp bonus so yeah so not the best gear on dolores but it's okay it works right you can see the stats and again i have a level 25 and ancestral teaching so that's three lots of level 25 ancestral teachings in this build so there we have five of our heroes shown there is Aeon as well with uh, Spellcaster's Echo and some gear, but she's not actually placed in this strategy, so it doesn't really matter. Then I have a Lightlock with a Broken set using Calamity on the left, DPS set, and on the right, pretty good in some parts of the gear. This one's not so great, but the rest of it is reasonably decent. And uh, yeah, he's not really there to heal. He's just there to, well, he's there to heal and also get a tiny bit of damage out, but it is very negligible. And then besides that, I do have a Laurel, Laurel is just there to give some rage regen to help Mary. It's not super important and it's obviously for her damage bonus from uh, this passive. And she has no awakenings and no artifact because it doesn't really matter. So on the awakenings front, let's cover that quickly before we begin. Lightlock is maxed awakened but he didn't really do a lot of damage so it doesn't matter. Dolores is max awakened but her awakenings beyond awakening 1 are not incredibly important. Awakened 2 and 5 do grant her some stats so that is helpful. 
marry does help you awakenings do help on marry so that is actually useful for this strategy awakenings are important on hollow because they help give her more rage regen for her allies so that is quite nice and more stats to heal for maul they do help but not really with his damage so much the penetration is nice but this is a slow crit rate i think i'm over anyway and the freeze again doesn't affect his damage so it's mainly just five percent penetration which isn't insane so awakenings aren't doing a great deal on maul to be honest and finally iona her awakenings are actually really important so if you're using iona in gear raid one her awakenings are a big deal so that is everything to cover regarding the gear of the heroes and the heroes used and shown so let's finally get on with it let's show you the actual run and uh, we'll do it just manually first i'll turn off i'll leave my power dominance turned off and you can see this is the lineup ah one hero i missed it is autumn autumn is another hero being used you can see no artifact five star and as for her gear it was just some gear with some hp to keep her alive it's not super important i just wanted to make sure she didn't die but I place her in a way that it makes it easier to keep her up. So that is it. And I have uh, Isolde in the run, but I don't ever place Isolde, so it doesn't really matter. So you can see I have two Epic Lords. One is Isolde, one is Aeon. This is not a run to say, hey, this is how you should beat it. This is just to show you how you can beat it with an Epic only team without ridiculous gear, you know, loads of Ancients, loads of Infernal Roar, Soulbound Arcana, or, you know, top tier mythic artifacts like uh, Tier of Starlight, which is just insanely good especially for this particular raid so yeah you might not have these epics but hopefully you have other good heroes as well who can be used in substitutes such as other legendary mages so this is just to give you an idea okay so first thing we place down maul facing across we take down a dolores on the left side so that she takes the brunt of the aoe damage we don't want our five star autumn to be taking all that damage doesn't even really need to be five star i think she can be four star i haven't checked the promotions so maybe want to double check that but yeah, there we go. That's the placement. Both the DPS boosters at the bottom, the two DPS at the top in a line, they both reach all the way across. We can place Laurel just so she can grant the 20% damage on alt triggering. And so far, pretty good. And he just fired his defense break so we can alt with more. We can place down Hollow to get some rage regen out. And uh, yeah, should be fairly smooth sailing. And there we have that. Just so you know, this is not a clean run. This, uh, If it works, it will not be the first attempt. So this is really messy because it's quite restricted in, in what I'm using and how I'm using it. So you have to be quite careful. So we'll, for this point, I will fire one ult just so I can freeze these guys and delay them a bit. And then I'll ult again uh, over here just so we can buy some time. And now I'll ult with everyone. It's not great. I don't know exactly the timings for this. It's, it's quite hard to decide exactly when to do it. But I do want to not give them too much time on the wall. Because these guys really do hurt the wall a lot. So that's quite good. We managed to kill them before they did way too much damage. They really do cause a lot of problems. You want to get rid of that wave as quick as you can. It's the blood ooze wave. Because they do so much damage. So that's a big priority to deal with that. And I'll just pop everything for now because we do want to get rid of this wave quite quickly as well. Because there's a bit of a delay on these guys, so it's it's good if we can whittle this down before then. And uh, not too bad, not great, but not too bad. We'll ult now with my Mary so we can buy some time. This part's tricky though. There's a lot of damage coming out now and we need to get this ult up from Hollow. And now we can ult with everyone else to get the DPS out. This is now a DPS race at this point. We just need to get the damage out as quick as we can and ideally keep them off the wall as much as we can. But this is where the run tends to fall apart. So I think building up the Isolde could help quite a bit here. Because if the wall does break, you can block them, which is uh, actually quite helpful. So I'm going to save this ult for now from Maul. Actually, we'll fire it now that we've got the Dolores and we'll pop the Rage Boost from Hollow. And yeah, there's good enough duration there. We can line that up with the Mary Freeze so we can get the burst damage out here. And it's not going great. It's going okay. But the healing is so heavy. The healing is really high. So I'm not sure this is going to be a win. 
freeze out freeze again more boost more boost and yeah it's basically just a dps race we really do want to be killing these guys a bit faster than we are unfortunately just going to keep trying to freeze them to stagger them so that we can buy some time but we don't have any alts up right now so this is quite tricky and the heal out from the boss we'll just ult again just to buy some time but it's uh okay we have the yellow we have the uh eona ult up now the boss is very close to going down but the wall is pretty much ruined now come on freeze don't let them take the wall <laughs> okay so you can see it's not the, it's not the smoothest run but it worked all right it's not the best the wall exists there's like two bricks left but it worked so it's pretty clutch as you can see not my best run unsurprisingly but it did succeed we did beat it with an epic only team without using gear from 19 plus without using mythic gear no legendaries so yeah i'm happy it works and for the dps you can see here it is maul maul is absolutely shredding with 72.6 million damage beating even iona so yeah maul is really good i used his solder for the 10 percent bonus stats he was being boosted by dolores's attack by autumn's crit damage and crit rate and let's not forget laurel has map wide damage bonus as well so he was getting lord stats attack boost damage boost and crit damage boost he was getting all kinds of things as well as rage regen from hollow so i do find success building around three damage dealers seems to give you the main results building around three of them so yeah that's the team that's how it works and uh We'll move on to showing some other epic heroes so you can get an idea of other ways of doing this. Alrighty, so I have removed the Laurel from the team, which may not be the best idea, but I want to show you this guy, Aatrox. He was recently added along with the Chaos Faction, Chaos Dominion, and he's insanely good in Gear Raid 1 up to stage 19. So I'll go over his gearing and then I'll explain why, how he's good and some limitations for him and more that you will need to keep in mind. So I have given him a pretty good book. It's actually not incredible because it's not that high roll on the attack bonus. It's just because I needed to throw gear on a bunch of people. So I've just been stealing stuff uh, indiscriminately from people. A broken set on the right that is not great. You can see a very low roll on crit damage and an okay roll on crit rate. A decent amulet and a good ring. So yeah. Overall, not bad gear, and on artifacts, again, level 25 ancestral teachings, max skill, max promotion. The promotions do help, not crazy, but they do help, especially Awaken 5 is some good damage, so yeah. Anyway, the way he works is when he dies, he leaves behind a bunch of ground damage, and whenever he revives, his revival time increases, but so does his damage, so... He does some good AoE ground damage and he does normal damage type, which means physical damage. He's not dealing magic damage. Same as Maul. And the reason I'm pointing this out is that although Maul is a real beast up to stage 19, these guys won't work in 20 and 21. I mean, they, they will still do damage, but it's going to be incredibly capped in 20 and 21. The resistance goes up a lot for physical damage. And even with Maul's built-in defense break, it's just not going to be meaningful enough to help him get the damage out. But up to and including stage 19 these two are very impactful so we'll do the same run again but it'll be a bit easier this time i hope because we are going to be benefiting from aatrox so we will put down our mall at the back again we will this time put our dolores at the front up here and we will have our iona here because this will still hit the back tile over here so that's still fortunately nice We'll have our Autumn over here as before. And the difference is going to be that we can now place down Aatrox. I put Dolores on this corner so that her ult will cover Aatrox as well. That's the reasoning behind that. So at the moment he's just burning himself slowly. We can ult with everyone because everything's coming out now. And hopefully Aatrox dies during this so he can get his ground effect out. Oh, we, we, don't, even, we don't even get the ground effect out. But you can see we absolutely crushed that wave. That was complete massacre so that was really nice can we heal him we can't heal this guy no okay cool good to know so unfortunately he's gonna die at a bit of an inconvenient time i wanted him to die with dolores in effect so not really what i had in mind but that's okay so now we want to kill this wave off but hey look aatrox is back and this time he does die which is great because we want him to get his damage out and 
I'm just going to ult because Dolores is running out. Dolores' ult will be back quite soon. So I'm just going to hold off for a second. We'll ult with Viona for now. We'll ult with Dolores and then we'll place down Aatrox again. He just dies immediately, as you can see. But now his ground effect is down and he was boosted by Dolores at the time of death. And look at all that damage. We just completely eviscerated that wave. Absolutely destroyed it. We don't have a Laurel, so we are missing out on that 20% damage bonus. But hey, we're doing plenty fine. And now look, Aatrox is back again in time to line up with these. So he drops ground effect on the ground once again. Bunch of damage coming out. We can just throw some ults to get the damage out on these guys. And uh, I'll hold off on this ult. There's no need to rush. We are killing the enemies. And I'll ult now here just to buy some time. Aatrox's respawn is increasing. With every death it is, it gradually piling up his respawn time, which isn't great. I need to ult here because this is actually going to be really heavy. So it's a little bit scary. We are losing our Mary on the left side. We did drop our Aatrox already. We lost Mary, so that's unfortunate. But we've got some good damage out. We are down to 18 enemies remaining. And uh, yeah, he should be back up pretty soon. He's back up. I would like to wait for my Dolores' ult. So about now. And now we can drop him again. We'll try to get everything else up again. And there we go. That's good. So it is very unfortunate we lost Mary. That's a, a big hit to our damage output. But we are managing to smash through the enemies. We've now killed quite a lot of them. There's only a few of them left now. Well, seven of them left, but we are really, really breaking that number down quite quickly. So again, we can ult with our Dolores. We can ult here. I won't ult with the freezes just yet because I do want him to die again. But okay, yeah, that's not going to happen because of the enemies we have remaining. So that's fine. I'm just going to throw out the mall ult and we can mop up. But you can see this was actually quite a lot clearer. This was only my first attempt. The other one, the first video or the first clip you saw, that took me three attempts in recording, just so you know. Uh, this one was just the first attempt, so much easier, much smoother using Aatrox. It is, of course, another damage dealer, but he's just a really nice damage dealer to use. A lot more health on the wall, and like I said, first attempt, so not quite as clean on the timings, but yeah, Aatrox is great. And now we can look at the damage output, and you can see how good this guy is. And he is competing with Maul and Iona, and he was in the kind of scrap gear afterwards, so I would say he's in worse gear than they are. So... Damage results, 34.3 million damage. Pretty good. He's nearly competing with Iona. She's a full-fledged mage. He's a guy who just dies a lot. So I think that's a really good result. I think he's a really good fighter and you should definitely consider using him if you do have him. But again, he is physical damage type. He's not magic damage. That's important because it means the higher resistances in stage 20 and 21 are really going to be... Uh, negative on his damage output it's not ideal this is just aoe damage it doesn't say magic aoe damage so it is just this damage type and finally before we end the video i would like to show you a run using greed okay so greed he is a mage duo faction between nightmare and curse i have max skilled him i have got him to six star max promotion and i've given him the exact same gear you just saw on aatrox so it's kind of not great gear kind of okay broken set right and again, he is using the Ancestral Teachings at level 25. Uh, just This is end game content. Stage 19 to 21 is end game. If you're hung up about awakenings or skill ups, then you're not going to have a lot of joy in 19 to 21. So yeah, don't expect to beat this with very, very little. You're going to have to build whatever you're using. You're going to have to six star them other than select supporting heroes where their stats don't matter. So that is greed. And the reason he's super good and his awakenings really do help a lot with this. His basic attacks inflict 15% magic resistance reduction. This is basically a defense break for magic. So it's going to make your other magic damage dealing allies do a lot more damage. So it's really, really quite nice and good in conjunction with Iona. Additionally, he is cursed as well. And his ultimate afflicts slow in an area. 75% slow as well for 8 seconds. So yeah, he's really good at helping proc those effects and Awaken 5 helps him proc two of his special effects at the same time. So a damage area and a slow area. Awakening 1 procs both the increase in range and the magic resistance reduction as well. So his awakenings do help a lot all the way to Awaken 5, really do help him out. And Awaken 3 boosts the stacks on his passive. 
and if you don't know the passive is on kill grants him an attack percentage bonus and it becomes really quite a lot of attack bonus at max skill with awakened free so yeah that is greed he is better with a magic damage team so there's less synergy between him and maul if i wasn't able to use a hollow then i maybe i would be using the laurel instead with a normal healer like a midan or a vortex and i'd have to drop out the autumn in place of laurel so i removed maul and i've placed in a laurel instead so we're going to focus on just these guys for this run we're going to focus on iona and greed i don't actually think there's enough damage in this greed is not going to push out as much damage as our maul was unfortunately but it's still pretty decent and it is supporting Iona, so we'll see how they do together. Okay, I had a quick attempt trying with Greed instead of Maul. Basically the same team that we had with uh, Iona and Maul, but instead of Maul it was a Greed. So Greed is boosting, but he just does not have as much damage as Maul does. So Greed is a good mage to use. He has some good debuffs and he is very good in support. But I think he's better in stage 20 and 21 where the enemy resistance is so much higher that the, the magic resistance reduction has a bigger impact. In up to stage 19, the enemy resistances aren't so crazy high that you really need him. So yeah, although he did do decent damage, it's not comparable to Iona. Even Aatrox was a bit better than this, I think. So Aatrox and Maul, I think, are better than Greed for the actual raw damage output, but greedy is applying other things he's applying the slows and he is applying the magic resistance reduction but again i do think that is better in the final two stages of 20 and 21 anyway that is it for the video i hope it is helpful to some degree just to give you an idea of where heroes stand which heroes to use and which team comps to use it's definitely not going to be a perfect strategy i haven't dabbled too crazily but i wanted to show you some epic only teams that can work so yeah i know some of these are a bit rarer to get hollow and greed are kind of painful to pull but you can definitely make it work with some other things. I think the main thing is Maul is just a beast with Dolores. These two together just do so much damage. And if you can work things out around that, it will work. Abomination could do pretty good damage as well. So maybe a team using those two together could work. Anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you guys found it interesting. Let me know below if you have any other ideas or teams or quirky suggestions for comps that might help other people out because a lot of people do come up with some pretty cool strats. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.